In this video, we will be looking at the built-in RTC module of the new Arduino Uno Revision 4 board. In the old days, with old Arduino, when you were working on a digital clock project, you needed one of these RTC modules. And then, you also needed some kind of display to be able to show the time you read of RTC. But with this new board, you do not need all these components, because you have a built-in RTC module and this microcontroller also comes with LED matrix. The question is, can it be used to display time? If you're interested in the final result, stick around. Let's have a look at the Arduino R4 Wi-Fi built-in RTC module. This module is part of the Renesis core processor. We are also provided with a special RTC library that helps us retrieve current date and time. Some date and time components like hours, minutes and seconds are numbers, integers, but two have their own special types. One is called day of week and it can have following values. The other special one is month, which also has its own set of possible values. We also have RTC time object, which holds all the important information for storing date and time. This includes day of the month, month, year, hour, minutes, seconds, day of the week and a flag for daylight saving. The library provides a set of methods we can use to get any of this information from the RTC object. Let's see how to use the RTC time object and its methods. In the code, we have to initialize the RTC module. After that, we declare the RTC time object. At this point, it doesn't have any important data in it. Then we use the getTime method to fill up this RTC time object with the current time from the RTC module. After that, you can use methods. For example, getDayOfTheMonth method to show the day of the month. The RTC time object isn't just for reading and displaying time. Here we'll use it to set up the time in the RTC module. Once again, you initialize the RTC module, then you declare the RTC object, but this time you provide specific information that you want to set in it. This information describes the exact date and time you want to configure the RTC to use. And finally, we use setTime method to send the data from RTC object to RTC module. With this knowledge, we can write the code to test the RTC functionality. First, we declare the RTC library. In the setup function, we open serial monitor and initialize the RTC module. Then, we declare the RTC time object with the current date and time data. After that, we use setTime method to set the time in the RTC module. In the loop, we declare another RTC time object and use the getTime method to fill it with the current date and time information. Then we display all the date and time components in the serial monitor. Let's start with the day of the week. I mentioned that this component has a special data type, so we need to use the day of week to int method to get a value that the print method can understand. This method takes the day of week value and returns an integer that represents the day of the week. We also provide a boolean value to indicate whether Sunday is treated as the first or last day of the week. If the flag is set to true, the Sunday is represented by one, Monday by two and so on. If it is false, Sunday is represented by seven. Next, we move to displaying the day of the month and the month. Once again, we have a special data type for the month and we use month to int method to be able to print it into the serial monitor. We carry on displaying remaining time components. Now let's take a look at our code in Arduino IDE, send it to the board to see the result. Looks good, but the code inside the loop function runs too often. It would be better if it only ran when the seconds component changes. To do this, we need a new variable to remember the previous value of the seconds component. Each time we run the loop function, we check if the seconds value from the RTC module is different from the value stored in the current seconds variable. If they are different, we display the date and time again. After displaying all the information, we update the variable so we can detect the next seconds component change. Let's see how this works now.
much better. But there is one more thing. The integer representation of the day of the week can be confusing. So let's create the lookup table with labels of each day of the week and adjust the code to use the integer value to get and print the appropriate string instead. Let's take a look. Perfect. This isn't the best way because we have to keep changing a particular line of code whenever we want to set the time. Instead, we can use timestamp macro. At the time of compilation, this macro fetches the current time and returns it in a string in the following format. Let me show you how it works. First, we create a string variable in the setup part of the code. We store the time from a timestamp macro into this variable. Then we open the serial monitor and display this string. Let's take our code and put it through the compilation process. Now let's see what happens as a result. Great, so we just display the time when we compile the program. But how does this address our clock time setup problem? We can take this string and create a function that breaks it down into individual parts which are necessary to set the time. We give this string to the function as input along with eight memory pointers. These pointers help us find the right spots in the Arduino's memory when we store the different date and time components. Using the substring method, we can extract these individual values and put them in the right places in the memory. So we extract day of the week, month, day of the month, hour, minutes, seconds, and a year. If you are not entirely sure how memory pointers work, I have recently made a detailed video that explains it. Check it out. With the function we defined earlier, we can now extract date and time components. We do this by running the function and giving it the timestamp string and variable pointers as inputs. After we run this function, all the data and time parts are filled with the values representing the current date and time. To show you how this works, we can add set of print commands in the code that display all those eight components on the serial monitor. Here is the code. Let's send it to Arduino. Now let's see what we get as a result. It will first show you the composite string and then it will display all eight separate values that we extracted. So we have a function that governs the data we need. However, the data format extracted for the day of the week and month doesn't match what the set time method requires. To make it match, we need to convert the extracted day of the week values to the format needed for the time setup. And here is the function that does just that. We do the same thing to convert the values for the month component. Now equipped with these three functions, we are ready to modify our code to set the correct time in the RTC module during sketch compilation. To do this, we'll need few extra variables for time components. In the setup, we capture the result from running a timestamp macro into a string. Then we pass that string to our custom function, just like we've done before. Now using the time component variables with their newly populated values, we create an RTC time object. With this object, we can set the time in the RTC module. Let's load the code onto the microcontroller and see if it works. I am also displaying in the corner the Windows time captured on my laptop at the time of the compilation. And as you can see, they match. We have reached halfway point of this video. If you are still with me, that means that I am doing something right. And if I do, please give this video a like, consider subscribing and watch my other videos which are very similar to this one. If you want to support my channel in a way that has more immediate impact, you can become my patron or through PayPal or through YouTube membership. <laughs> I'm not going to stop you. And now back to the video. Now that we can get time components from the RTC module, the next step is to figure out how to show them on a built-in LED matrix. I am displaying this matrix in a portrait layout because fitting all of the components in landscape would be tricky. In our code we represent this matrix as this table. I will create another table that contains some data. Can you guess what that data is? Well, 
It actually contains pixel definitions for each digit. In the code, we'll need the LED matrix library that comes up with Arduino R4 Wi-Fi board. We'll declare the matrix and then we'll create a function that can display any given digit on the matrix at a specific x and y coordinates. In this function there is a nested for loop which would rewrite the values from a digits table that correspond to the digit provided as input to the timetable using provided x and y coordinates. For instance, if we use this function for the digit 1 and coordinates 0 and 0, it will change those values in the timetable. The last thing we need is to execute the render bitmap method, which will update the LED matrix with the changes made in the timetable. We can do the same process for digit 2 at coordinates 4 and 0, digit 4 at coordinates 1 and 6, and finally digit 5 at coordinates 5 and 6. As a result, we have effectively simulated displaying the time as 1246. Now let's load this code onto Arduino R4 Wi-Fi board and see the result. It looks good, right? Maybe it would look even better if we had a printed diffusion panel. What do you think? Looks much better. Now that we know how to show numbers on a built-in LED display, let's update the code we used to show time on a serial monitor. We can remove the table for weekdays as we won't need it anymore. We have to include a special library for revision for LED matrix and create an object for the matrix. In the setup part of the code we initialize that matrix object and the rest of the declaration and setup remains unchanged. In the loop we remove all the serial print commands as they are no longer necessary. We need to add display digit function we created before that will send the correct numbers onto the LED display. Now in the loop we use the digit display function four times. We use it twice to show the hour and twice to show the minutes on the LED display. To find the first digit of the hour we divide the hour by 10 and round up the result. For the second digit we take the reminder when dividing the hour by 10. We follow the same process for the minutes. Let's upload this code to the microcontroller and see the outcome. This beaten up phone belongs to my daughter and will help us check if the correct time was set. And as you can see it was. Filming the LED matrix is challenging. Even a small lighting issue can show interlacing of the display, or should I say multiplexing. To finish the clock display design, let's include a blinking column between hour and minutes. We require an extra variable to keep track of the column's state, whether it's on or off. In the loop, we'll toggle the state whenever the seconds change. Fun fact, did you know you can represent this if statement using an entirely different notation? We'll then update two cells in the timetable using that state variable. To make this work, we'll move the render bitmap method from the display digit function to the loop section so that is executed every second. Let's test it. You can see that the time already progressed by 3 4 minutes. Let's load the code again. And the blinking column looks great. Now it looks like a proper digital clock. Let's wrap up this video, but this project is far from being finished. I mean, look at this. This hardly looks like a clock. Also, it has a serious problem. When I disconnect it, the time is going to reset to the last time we compile the code, which is not what you want. Also, we can work on creating a 3D printed case for this clock, as well as maybe spice it up by introducing some cool transitions in between digits. But this is a topic for a whole new video, so I will see you next time. Ciao!